Players dribbled down the court while the crowd cheered with every made shot and groaned with every missed one. Such was the sight of players who participated in a wheelchair basketball tournament, and aside from periodic wheel adjustments, the competition had all the hallmarks of a traditional basketball game. Southfield's Beachwoods Recreation Center was the site of a wheelchair basketball tournament that featured some of the best moves from disabled athletes. The tournament was part of a cooperative effort between the city of Southfield, Oakland County Parks, and the Center for Independent Living at Ann Arbor. A few years ago, we came together to form a junior team for kids with physical disabilities to play wheelchair basketball. We also do other programs with them with like tennis, track and field events, and golf during the summer. We're affiliated with the Paralympics, um, so like people that have the regular Olympics, we also work with the Paralympics and we are actually the official club of the Paralympics as well as Blaze Sports. Today is a cooperative tournament. It's an adult tournament as well as a junior tournament. Um, so that they've got teams from all over Nashville, Pittsburgh, all over coming here to compete. So that traditionally we have to travel other places. So this is really cool that we have a home tournament in the city of Southfield. Southfield has had a team since 2003 and in recent years has become part of the National Association of Wheelchair Basketball. Yes, it is actually part of the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. All of the teams here have to be members of that organization and they're based out of Colorado. The teams have to play so many games locally or nationally to be able to qualify for a national tournament in Colorado in March. This season for us goes from September till April and we have kids of all ages. The youngest is four all the way up to 18. They all have varying disabilities. They all have to have a physical disability from spinal cord injury, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, um, just paralysis. So there's a wide range of disabilities. And we practice at Beachwoods um, every Wednesday night. And then we travel to tournaments on the weekends. We travel to six to eight tournaments per year. And there are only a couple teams in the state of Michigan, so we travel all over the country. We've gone to Wisconsin, to Nashville. We travel a lot to Indiana and Chicago area to try to play our tournaments. In terms of officiating, many of the rules are very similar to those of traditional basketball. Yes, traveling, uh, they're allowed with the ball. They're allowed to take two dribbles. I uh, no, I'm sorry, they can take as many dribbles as they want without pushing the chair. But when they want to push the chair, then they usually put the ball in their lap and then they're only allowed two pushes on their wheels and then they have to let the ball go and bounce. It has to hit the floor before they're allowed to do a third push. Now some guys are skilled enough they can wheel their chair and, and dribble too. So that, you know, they can do this all the way down the floor. But if you put the ball in your lap or when it comes to rest, they're only allowed two pushes and then they've got to put the ball to the floor or pass it or shoot it. The most fouls, like I was saying earlier, is with the chair. That's where you really got to watch. Okay, to get advantage of that. Also, we gotta watch to make sure they don't bring their their cheek their cheeks up off the seat of the chair, because that is what we call a, a PAF or a a physical advantage foul, where they're lifting themselves up off the chair. That's a technical foul, and the other team goes down the other end and shoots two shots, and uh, we go back to the point of interruption. So we have that foul. But, but the chair is the most important thing. The physical stuff uh, that's all the same. Pretty well as able body, we've got to watch contact with the hands, or usually that comes during the shooting or passing part of the game. Organizers see the Wheelchair Basketball League as adding value to disabled athletes, which may be fueling its growing popularity in Southfield and other cities. The value of wheelchair basketball, it gives kids that have disabilities the opportunity to compete on a level playing field against other kids that have disabilities. Many times they can compete at their own schools but the playing field is so off where they can't ever feel like they win. We're here, it's equal competition. He's, he's 18 now, when he was 11, he had a, uh, uh, basically an aneurysm in his spine and that left him paralyzed, uh, basically from the waist down. And initially, it's, it, it's, it's a shock it would be to any parent, you know, you, you, uh, it shouldn't happen to your child sort of thing. And, and it's tough, uh, and after the shock wears off, then you, you, you have to adapt and you have to learn. He uh, stayed in Ann Arbor Children's Hospital for five weeks. Uh, we did, he underwent physical therapy and, and they stabilized him. And then when we came home, uh, we lived in a house, that, a two-story house that was not, it, it couldn't be adapted. So we eventually built another house. Uh, it's accessible for him. 
and, and, and again, like I said, we, we continued and even though we had to modify things and adapt things to, to lead as normal a life as possible for Justin. What is nice about wheelchair basketball is um, this is part of wheelchair sports and for our youth, they can compete on their able-bodied high school or middle school basketball teams. They can't keep up. Some of our kids do walk, but they can't keep up with their able-bodied peers. So this wheelchair basketball is their middle school and high school games and or high school basketball and we have kids who are actually earning letters varsity letters in wheelchair basketball for their school so it kind of brings the kids together from this area to combine to to put a program together and this program again is part of a wheelchair sports program in the city we do um, we have track and field we do adaptive golf so there are a variety of wheelchair sports that we add on to wheelchair basketball that people can get involved in it's, it's, it's good for him it's, and it's good for all, all the kids that are involved. They, they get to be included. Um, they get to be with other children that are like themselves. So there's, they don't have to explain to each other what their situation is. They, it, there's like an unspoken bond between them. They all know, they all have the same issues and they all have to deal with the same things. And so that part was like already taken care of so they could focus on basketball and play and that's what they do. Yeah. I this is where we practice this facility and I travel about an hour and 15 minutes each way every Wednesday to get here. Dedication. <laughs> and uh, yep, the tournaments are all over the United States. It means everything to me. I mean, I love the sport and after I got injured, I was reintroduced to it and I was glad to see that there's still basketball despite being physically disabled. It's great because it gives him the opportunity to participate in a sport, which, which he wants to do, uh, because we know that given his condition, it, it's not feasible, let's say, because he's a high school senior, they don't, you know, he can't play basketball with his, you know, his, his schoolmates. So it gives him an opportunity to be inclusive and, and again, to try to lead as normal a life as possible, like any other 18-year-old would. He, he plans, he's, he's already been accepted to college and he's looking at possibly playing college uh, wheelchair basketball at the college level. To learn more about the Wheelchair Basketball League, call Claudia Brewer at Beachwoods Recreation Center at area code 248-796-4673.